Well, good morning, everybody. Pleasant to see you all. Hope everybody's doing okay. It's a very cool morning here in Ellensburg. Low 40s Fahrenheit, light breeze. Happy to be here with you. Got some technical stuff I'd like to uh, work out with you or at least update you on, but uh, can I do a quick, um, how we doing audio? How we doing video? How we doing buffering? We did have an issue yesterday. So far so good? Terrific. I think I'm gonna take that wind chime down. That's, that's distracting me already. Thank you. Good, looks like it's all systems go. Um, this morning's program involves a discussion of Bridge of the Gods that will start at the top of the hour. If you're watching live, we'll start in about 10 minutes. If you're watching the replay, feel free. Skip ahead 10 minutes. Okay? I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> this episode of Nick on the Rocks brought to you by Timex. Timex. You gotta love it. Uh, still doing okay. I'm, I'm of course, uh, hyper aware. I was really disappointed. I was pleased with yesterday's uh, session. And when I started seeing buffering comments, I'm like, oh, cripes. So I chatted with uh, the fellow who dropped in for a while. His wife showed up. We talked for a while. I was kind of like thinking about buffering the whole time. <laughs> We're talking to them. And then Liz said, let's go on a hike. Let's go out towards the Quillamine. It's like, okay. So got some Campus U Totem Burgers. This episode brought to you by Campus U Totem Burgers. You got to love it. And finally got back uh, to the house like, I don't know, 4.30, 5 o'clock last night. Went right to rewatch, to watch the replay of what we did yesterday, I was like waiting for this buffering stuff. And I was kind of pleased that we got through most of it without those issues. And, uh, and then things started to get choppy. So I've been, uh, we'll see if we've solved the problem. I made some adjustments here at the house. So no reason to get into all that, but, um, I've done what I can on this end to minimize that, and hopefully we'll make it through today without, if you're unfamiliar with what buffering is, I'm talking about the Great Earthquakes live stream we did yesterday. Things got choppy. The audio cut out, the video would freeze on occasion, and it was uh, just like our first one that we did where I was had this, this camera way over by the parking spot. So I'm a little closer to the house, Blah, blah, blah. I got a schedule for next week. We're going week by week. There's five of these live streams every week and I'm sticking with our schedule. There's a little twist, but we're sticking with our schedule. Let me show it to you.
So I'll share this quite a bit uh, over the next few days, but uh, this is our first glimpse at um, the week ahead. And I'm a calendar guy, man. So I just like putting things on my calendar. It just makes me feel good. So um, if you're that kind of a person, here's a few things to pencil in. But if you've been with us for a while, you know this is our routine. No live stream tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, back with the normal setup with the frogs in the background and the setting sun. And then Saturday and Sunday of next weekend, Easter weekend, <laughs> wow, um, we'll be back with this, uh, this kind of a setup, I suppose. Now you'll notice that there's a, there's a twist on Saturday and I'll say more about this as the week goes on, but um, there's a very good Facebook page called Learning Geology. And actually, Kasim has things on other social media as well, but he's live streaming with guest geologists and he has big numbers. He, he's in Pakistan, a lot of people viewing. And so he invited me to join his Facebook page for a live stream. So I thought, yeah, I'll just stick with our schedule, but we'll, uh, we'll hustle over to Facebook uh, next Saturday. So we can talk more about the details of that in case that's confusing to you or whatever, but uh, that's the schedule. So obviously you'll see a theme for the week is uh, Ice Age and the Pacific Northwest. Okay. Uh, at this point, I think most of you are kind of checking in as soon as you uh, may leave a live comment and you're showing where you're watching from, and so I won't ask you to do that again, but um, it has been super pleasant to, uh, to see you all from so many different places. And uh, it's a small world after all. Copyright. Disneyland, you gotta love it. This episode brought to you by Disneyland. Not Disney World, Disneyland. Now watch this program get yanked off of YouTube because I'm... <laughs> I'm not sure there's anything else I wanna say before we begin. Just reading a few quick comments. Oh, I gotta get my laptop set up, hang on. The little globe that I still have out here that spins under its own magnetic field power. Don't ask me the details. My mom emailed last night and said she bought that from, and I think somebody left a live comment as well, uh, Mova Globes or Mova Globes, M-O-V-A Globes. If you're wanting to look into purchasing your own, there's different styles but there are these cute little globes. I'm not gonna pick it up. I don't know, I, can you see it down here? So it's, if you Okay. The, the tech helps continue to pour in, you know, about, Anyway, thank you for all your help. Many of those comments and tips are very much appreciated. I continue to learn how to do all this stuff. I'm not gifted in that capacity, but it uh, feels like we're getting there. One minute and we're gonna get started.
Well, good morning, everybody. Let's begin. Welcome to Ellensburg, Washington, USA. I'm your host, Nick Zentner. I teach geology at a college in this little town called Ellensburg. And the name of the university is Central Washington University. And I'm home just like your home and um, hoping we can spend an hour together like we have been uh, these last few weeks. So I, I announced the schedule for next week already. I'll show you that schedule again at the end of this session. But let's get right into our topic tonight, slash this morning, slash this afternoon, which is something called the Bridge of the Gods Landslide. And admittedly, this is a very local story, meaning it's not only in the Pacific Northwest, but it's in a very specific place in the Pacific Northwest called the Columbia River Gorge. And it's not the whole Columbia River Gorge, it's just one tiny spot within the Columbia River Gorge, right here right in the heart of the gorge, where you're passing right through the heart of the Cascade mountain range. And it's a story of something called the Bridge of the Gods, which, depending on which generation of person you're talking to, is viewed differently, and I'll explain that in a second. There's also some interesting new data that perhaps helps us understand what triggered the landslide. Now, I already... I already revealed part of this. This is a landslide talk. And um, how else can I tease this? Let's see. Um, so we're going to talk about earthquakes. We're going to talk about landslides. We're going to talk about more dead trees, not the ghost forest, but something else. We're going to talk about Chris Goldfinger again. We're going to talk about Brian Atwater a little bit again. Those are names from yesterday. Jim O'Connor, Pat Pringle. There's a bunch of people who've been kind of working uh, on this issue. And it's a beautiful area. That's a plus. You know, most of these geology lessons involve places that are just photogenic. They're just beautiful. And I've got another tip for you. Uh, there's a geology slashed artist by the name of Daniel Coe, C-O-E. And he works for the Washington Geological Survey. You'll find him, Instagram or um, his website, Daniel Coe, C-O-E. Let me show you. Let's, that, that's how we're going to start. Let me show you an example of the beautiful things that Daniel can do with his computer, combining his art degree and his geology degree. So Daniel visited our department last fall, brought a bunch of his posters with him, and these are all available online as well. And you'll notice the title of Daniel's poster is The Bonneville Landslide, also known as The Bridge of the Gods. So this is our topic, and we'll eventually zoom in on all sorts of details on Daniel's poster. Um, but we got to make sure we know where we are, especially if you're living in Pakistan or Scotland or the UK or Barcelona or all these places that got me choked up yesterday. I'm glad you're with us again today. We have more than 500 already. That's wonderful. Let's figure out specifically where we are and try to answer some questions like, what was the Bridge of the Gods? Landslide, but does everybody think it was a landslide? The answer is no. Muffler boy making an appearance this morning. We have new ways to get dates on that landslide. We got it down to a couple of decades about when the Bridge of the Gods landslide or the Bonneville landslide happened. And that helps us then uh, use some earthquake data to see if there's a connection. Okay. That was the introduction. So this is Washington, this is Oregon, this is the Columbia River. If you're not from North America, we have a major river here in the Pacific Northwest. It's called the Columbia River. It's not the Colorado River. The Colorado River is the one in the desert southwest that flows through Arizona and has carved the Grand Canyon. That's not this one. This is the Columbia River. And if we zoom in on my favorite old map that I've had my whole teaching career and get rid of the glare perhaps, and try to get some focus working here and come in pretty tight. Let's look at the path of the Columbia River in living color. 
So here's, here's the Columbia River coming out of British Columbia, crossing the border into the U.S. Here's the Columbia River swinging over towards Chelan and Wenatchee. Here's the Columbia River. It's winding through the desert, basically. And then the Columbia River, for some unknown reason, hangs a right, in other words, sharply turns to the west, heads straight for our biggest mountain range, the Cascades, and punches a hole right through the Cascades, or so it appears. And this is where we're going. This chalkboard is a detailed map of what's going on right in here. In fact, I think it even says Bonneville Dam, and that's right next to the Bridge of the Gods landslide, as you'll see. And then this Columbia River flows to the ocean. So before I lose this, wh why, how is that possible? How is it possible that the Columbia River punched a hole through the Cascades? That's a topic for another day, but I can tell you that the main message is the Columbia River is older than the Cascades. The Columbia River was there first, and then the Cascades grew on both sides. And I think that's a surprise to many who think about these sorts of things and haven't done a lot of reading on geology. In fact, this is the same Columbia River Gorge that was the outlet for all these Ice Age floods that we'll be talking about very, very specifically next this upcoming week. So it's not on this map, but here's all this water during the Ice Age coming down the Columbia River and the Columbia River Gorge is, is right over here. So all these Missoula floods and other major Ice Age floods, even the Bonneville flood that you've heard of perhaps, is also coming right through this scene. But let's not get carried away. That's way too old for our story. I'll give you a hint. We know that this landslide, the topic of this session this morning, is way, way younger than a thousand years ago. And those Ice Age floods came through more than 10,000 years ago. So let's get that out of the way. But the point is we have a Columbia River Gorge. We've had a bunch of Ice Age floods coming through. And we're going to have this landslide. Um, I don't want to give it away yet, but less than 1,000 years ago. And we'll show you the evidence for that. Okay, let's actually do something real. Um... Now, there is something called the Bridge of the Gods, and it's an actual bridge. You can drive across it. It's a toll bridge. It costs a couple bucks to drive across, and it's right here. So if you're on the Oregon side, there's a freeway, Interstate 84, Hood River, Cascade Locks, Portland, and there's a tremendous rain shadow effect, by the way, if you're not familiar. It's very wet over here on the Portland side. Seattle's up here, by the way. And then when you cross over the Cascades, like this is, this is all the Cascades coming right through this picture here. And again, Cascade Locks is right in the heart of the Cascades. But by the time you get over to Hood River and especially over to the Dalles, it's a desert. Rain shadow effect. But there's only one place really to cross the river conveniently here with a short bridge, and it's the Bridge of the Gods. A cantilever bridge built in the 1920s and they chose this spot for good reason. The river is choked down here. The river is narrow here compared to downstream and upstream of this location. So again, there's confusion. Oh, Bridge of the Gods. Yeah, I drive over that every summer with my family. Well, that's not our topic tonight. I'm not talking about bridges. I'm not talking about a bridge bridge. I'm talking about a geology or a geologic Bridge of the Gods. And then some, especially older people, will say, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The Bridge of the Gods. An, an arch, like a, like a bedrock arch, like, like before they built this bridge, that there was some sort of rock arch with the Columbia River passing underneath it. And you're like, where in the world did that idea come from? Is it just people taking the word bridge and just like, thinking literally like it was a rock bridge that you could walk across. Well, this book was a gift given to me by Mrs. Stockdale over in Vantage. It was her dad's, or maybe her grandfather's, I'm sorry, Tom Stockdale. 
Uh, it's, a, it's an edition from 1902. It's called The Bridge of the Gods, A Romance of Indian Oregon. 1902. Uh, the author is F.H. Balch or Balk. And I want to read this a portion of the preface to you. It's a publisher's note written on July 1st, 1902. He's talking about the author, Mr. We'll call him Mr. Balch. By personal inquiry among old natives, Mr. Balch learned that the bridge of the gods was suggested the title of his romance. And it was no fabric of the imagination, but was a great natural bridge that in the early days spanned the Columbia River. And later, according to Native American tradition, was destroyed by an earthquake. Well, I got to talk to Randy and a couple of my other Native American uh, sources to see if that's true, first of all. Or was this a white guy visiting Native Americans in the late 1800s and kind of hearing what they were saying and making a bridge in his mind. Regardless, according to tradition, was a natural bridge that was destroyed by an earthquake. I'm going to argue for the opposite based on the geology evidence that we have. I'm going to make an argument that there was a bridge of the gods created by an earthquake, not a bridge of the gods destroyed by an earthquake. And you're like, I don't think I understand that. Well, there was a, 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 a regular, persistent Native American story that for a time you could walk from Washington to Oregon or vice versa without getting your feet wet. In other words, there was a time that you could literally cross this area through the Columbia Gorge and the river was not flowing. And everybody agrees that's true. But geologically, we don't have any evidence for a rock bridge, like in Arches National Park, for instance with the Columbia flowing underneath it. I mean, that's a cool idea, and there's paintings and everything, you know, uh, with that image. But instead, I want to show you the evidence we have for the land bridge being the actual landslide, where we actually, this whole thing is the landslide. That's why this river is so narrow here. A part of Washington broke free, slid, completely slid to the Oregon side, pushed the old channel of the Columbia River a mile to the south, and since that time, the Columbia River has worked its way through the Bonneville landslide or the Bridge of the Gods landslide. So you can't walk today across the river because the river has established itself. But it was a landslide bridge instead of a rock bridge. There's no geologic evidence for a bedrock bridge. Okay? Good. Uh, so what evidence do we have? How are we sure this was a landslide story instead of a rock bridge story? Well, let's go back to Dan. And let's push in a little bit more specifically now. Actually, let me show you this first. We made a little list yesterday, don't you remember, about what Atwater found on the coast to convince himself that there were great earthquakes? Uh, here's our list this morning for evidence of a landslide, not just for the Bonneville or Bridge of the Gods landslide, but these are classic ways to convince yourself that a, that a landslide happened long ago, even though you didn't, nobody saw it. You can reconstruct it geologically. Rubble, lakes, headscarp, drowned trees. Let's go through each. So first off, this area downstream of Stevenson, this area across the river from Cascade Locks, there's no bedrock there. There's no um, uh, cliffs of uh, bedrock that you can see in the walls. You can see that upstream. You can see that downstream. You can see layers I'm choosing my words carefully because they're actually, it's actually the German chocolate cake. In the walls of the Columbia River Gorge, except for this area, you can see lava flows in the walls on both sides of the Columbia River Gorge. And people know the Cascades are volcanoes, so I think if people are thinking at all, they're going, oh, that looks like lava, and it must be from some 
cascade eruptions like Mount St. Helens is nearby, Mount Hood. But instead, those lava rock layers are the German chocolate cake. They're from those fissures 15 million years ago that flowed through this area. Different topic. Okay, but number one is rubble. So what I'm showing you here is there's no obvious bedrock and instead this whole area just downstream of Stevenson, Washington is just a pile of blocks, boulders uh, down to size of gravel, uh, individual like uh, wedges of material. And Dan's image does a beautiful job showing that. It's hummocky. It's, it's an area that, is, that, that does not have a simple topography. I'm gonna try to zoom in now. I do that hand trick to try to get the camera to focus properly. I don't know if it works or not. And do you see how rubbly it is, how bumpy, how up and down, how undulating that landscape is? You're looking at the Bridge of the Gods landslide right now. And if you're, if you're discombobulated, what you're looking at here is this thing I'm showing you from straight down. Dan shows a nice angle. And you'll all just notice what Daniel has done. He's shown that there are many landslides in this area of the gorge, many of them, not just one. And you're like, wow, how, I, I know that drive. I've driven that all the time between Portland and Yakima or something. How come I haven't seen all this? Well, there's a lot of trees down there. It's tough to see this landscape. And what Dan does is, is digitally remove all the trees using LIDAR imagery uh, to show all this. So rubble number one, good. I'll keep with Dan because look what he has. There are tons of lakes in the hummocky topography, that's number two on our list. Oh, my arm got tired there. Hang on, I got, I got, I got. Whew, didn't drink enough water this morning. I cramped up. Let's try it again. Look at all the lakes on top of the landslide. And I could be talking about a landslide in Russia or Kazakhstan or Pakistan or Japan or anywhere in the world, Antarctica even and you have this hummocky topography, you have this rubble, you have these lakes, and it's a classic way to look at that. The lakes are the result of bringing all that land down from a mountaintop nearby and screwing up the drainage. I mean, lakes are basically the result of messing up a beautiful ordered stream system, a network of streams and creeks and, and rivers. And it's pretty bizarre to have a bunch of lakes in our biggest river gorge in the Pacific Northwest, lakes, which means the lakes, are, that's water that can't drain to the ocean. The lakes are on the landslide because of the disruption. What's third on our list? Head scarp. Some of you know what that means. And the next time you drive, let's say you're inspired and you feel like taking a drive, you're watching in Portland right now, and after this session, you're going to drive up there. It's about a, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes up, up river from Portland, and you're like, I want to go see this thing. Easiest, uh, the easiest thing to look for to say, oh, I think we've got it. I know where this, this, this landslide is now. is that high above the Bridge of the Gods landslide is a steep cliff, and that's a head scarp. What that means is there's a mountain up here called Table Mountain. It's high, it's kind of table-ish. It's the German chocolate cake, by the way. It's basalt lava flows. But when this event happened, I'm gonna be coy about the actual date, and I want you to stick with us. When Table Mountain broke, and it's just like it sounds, there's a crack, and uh, everything south of this crack on the Washington side is going to slump down into the Columbia Gorge. And it's gonna happen quickly, like landslides tragically do. We had Oso landslide uh, less than 10 years ago on, in Western Washington, and people were killed. Uh, this, is, this is a much bigger version of the Oso landslide, or the Malaga slide. There's other landslides all through the Pacific Northwest. But the point is, something triggered that landslide. Something caused that mountain to split and have a portion of the mountain fall in. 
And it's all up and down the Washington side, by the way. So I got to go back to Daniel one more time. He's such a nice guy, such a humble guy, but boy, he's doing things that nobody else is doing, as far as I can tell. So do you see? Here's the headscarf. He actually has it labeled headscarf. That's convenient. The Table Mountain headscarf. And you can clearly see where that Mount Table Mountain just broke cleanly and that material slid or slumped down into the river. And I'm talking and I'm talking about I know that the Columbia River today works its way around the what looks like the southern edge of the landslide, but please realize that when this thing happened, it was uh plenty of Washington that got um, smeared onto the o Oregon side. We truly did stop the river. In fact, that's what we'll do next. So can you do this with me? Uh, this is sometime younger than a thousand years ago. I'm getting there. We break Table Mountain. We have the landslide. As soon as the landslide happens, it's big enough to completely seal off the gorge. Got it? So our Columbia River suddenly, downstream of this, has, has run dry. Literally, like the, the river just goes away. We drain that water and, and we've stopped the river. So when we have this kind of fresh landslide, we'll call it the Bonneville landslide right now, uh, this is then the bridge of the gods, B-O-T-G. And our Native American friends can be walking back and forth, and there's that story. You can walk across the Columbia without getting your feet wet. But what's here? For a time, we're going to have the lake of the gods. We've blocked the river. We still have water flowing down from Canada, going through the desert, coming into this area. But this river, for a while, cannot leave and get to the ocean. And so we have this ponded water, the Lake of the Gods. All right. The fourth piece of evidence is drowned trees. So I want to draw this one with you. So here's our picture right before we had the landslide. Remember what I just had before? I had the Columbia River flowing from east to west. And I'm adding now the idea that in the floodplain on both sides of the channel of the Columbia River, before the landslide, we had a bunch of living trees. You can picture that, can't you? You're walking with your dog in a floodplain and there's all these wonderful poplars and everything, all these beautiful smells, especially this time of year, and you're walking next to a river. Okay, Irene Reinhardt Park, just, just south of Ellensburg, for instance. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's make our landslide. Hang with me now. This can be awkward because I want to draw in real time with you. Got pieces of chalk flying all over the place. All right. So here's the map view. We just had the Bridge of the Gods landslide. It went all the way across, a complete seal. Here's that same Bridge of the Gods, but from the side, right? This is, here's this, here's this, it's a sunny day. So it's a cross section of the landslide. I hope you're with me. So we're gonna stop our Columbia River flowage and we're gonna make a lake. We have good measurements, mainly from Jim O'Connor, who's done most of the geology on this slide in the last 30 years. This is a 300 foot high dam. The Bridge of the Gods landslide, when it comes to rest, is 300 feet tall. Rubble that's 300 feet high. And our alive trees are going to get killed. Why? This is not the ghost forest from yesterday. This is not a big earthquake happening here. We'll hold off on that, actually. You got an idea? Why are these trees going to die? And why would they be helpful to us to get an age of the landslide? Two reasonable questions. 
Well, the first thing to say is we're going to make our lake of the gods for reasons I mentioned over here. And we're going to pond water upstream of this landslide dam. And we're going to get the lake of the gods to rise hundreds of feet above the, where the Columbia River used to flow. This is standing water. Why are the trees getting killed? We're submerging them. You can't stay alive as a tree if you're completely underwater. For how many years? Difficult to say. We don't have that date. We don't have that timing. Is this decades? Are these just years? Are these months? Don't know. But we have enough submergence of these trees that they get killed. Okay. This lake of the gods was so long that it extended all the way up to the Tri-Cities. 170 miles? Yes. The lake of the gods, when it, when it existed, it doesn't exist anymore because you know what's going to happen. We're eventually going to breach this landslide dam and we're going to drain this water and have the Columbia River again, like Dan just showed us. But when we had the lake of the gods, it was hundreds of feet deep and it extended that backed up water. This is not the ice age now. This is less than a thousand years ago. We had the lake of the gods going all the way back up to Portland, uh, all the way up to Pasco or the Tri-Cities. Okay, uh, I want to, I hope you're still with me. We're almost 600 folks. I guess you're not leaving, so that means you must be kind of interested. Okay, there's two questions left and they're the juiciest questions. When did this happen? Can we get a date on this landslide? And secondly, what can we say in an intelligent way about why that landslide happened? When and why? And then we'll go to your live Q and A session after this. Okay, give me another 10 minutes-ish. Good, feeling fine? I'm stalling for a second. What, how do I want to do this? When? Yeah, okay. So we, no, we'll do it this way. So Jim O'Connor has been, Jim O'Connor lives in Portland. He's the main USGS geologist working on Columbia River Gorge geology. Another fine person, dedicated person, does amazing work. He has been working on this problem of trying to figure out how quickly did the Lake of the Gods go away? In other words, how was it a cataclysmic draining through? Because we know, what do we know? We know that eventually this lake is going to go away because the Columbia River is eventually going to overtop this speed bump that's out there in the middle of the water. And we're going to be able to get our Columbia River to get to flow again. So I've got a bunch on that, but I don't want to do it. In other words, Jim's data. My main message is he's got evidence that he knows where the high water mark of the Lake of the Gods was because he has some river deltas coming in from Scythe Canyons to restore where that old lake level was. And then he's got the other kinds of data to, to prove that the breaching of this landslide dam did not happen all at once. There were episodic wearings away, terrible grammar of this landslide dam. But there was, so I'm saying that it didn't all breach down through in one shot. But there is evidence that during this kind of episodic breaching or lowering of material in the dam so that the river could get established again, there is one really important message. So I'll kind of put the former Bridge of the Gods landslide in there for you. And then Jim has found boulders near Bonneville Dam, which is just downstream, built in the 30s. Uh, he's found a bunch of sand near Portland. He's found a bunch of silt, Longview, Kelso, and further down. And we'll come back to this in a second, but he's got a way to convince us that a bunch of the material in the Bonneville landslide got t picked up by the early 
onset of the Columbia River flow itself and redistributing these rocks of different sizes. I mean, if you're in a landslide, everything's poorly sorted. Boulders, sand, everything in between. It's all just, all just came, came crashing down from Table Mountain. But if you have the Columbia River then breaching this landslide dam, we can sort this stuff by size. And again, we're gonna come back to that sketch in just a second. But timing, date-wise, what's the best way that we can pinpoint at least the decade or two when the Bridge of the Gods landslide happened? You remember our live trees that then got killed when the landslide happened? This is kind of like the ghost forest now. What would you do? Well, if we breached the landslide, we're gonna get rid of the lake of the gods. We're gonna get rid of the lake. We're gonna get rid of the water that was sitting on top of these trees. They're no longer alive, they're still dead, but now they're visible. Lewis and Clark came through here in 1805. They were smart guys for many reasons. They made careful observations as they were trying like heck to get to the ocean. And after that long journey, they noticed those standing trees that were submerged partially in the water, but not much of those dead trees were standing above the water level of the Columbia River. They noticed the head scarf. They noticed the hummocky topography. They deduced there was some sort of landslide. And in Lewis and Clark's notes, again, this is 1805, they thought everything looks pretty fresh here. I, in, in Lewis and Clark's notes, they're saying, I think that landslide must have happened a decade or two, late 1700s sometime. Before we're coming through, it looks pretty fresh stuff. So Donald Lawrence, back in the 1930s, before they actually put in Bonneville Dam, and when they put in Bonneville Dam, a CCC project, I guess, I don't even know, um, we re-submerge those trees behind artificial dam now. And so we can't get to those trees anymore for the most part, but Donald could uh, in the 1930s. And he did tree ring analysis and tried to figure out when those trees died. Uh, he also, Donald Lawrence, I'm sure you can find some of those papers if you look. Donald Lawrence, Columbia River Gorge, dendrochronology stuff. He also went up and found trees that were growing on top of the landslide. You can follow the logic there, right? If you've got a tree that's growing on the surface of the landslide, the tree has to be younger than the landslide. So Donald says, what if I find the oldest living tree and the youngest dead tree that got killed essentially by the landslide and I can bracket the age? I'm finally ready to give it to you. This is our most accurate date range for the Bridge of the Gods landslide. And I'll do it this way. Uh, 1400 AD, 1500 AD, 1600 AD, 1700 AD. That's the range of this story we're talking about. We're clearly less than a thousand years ago. We're clearly, clearly, clearly younger than Ice Age stuff, correct? Uh, based on Donald Lawrence's tree work and Jim O'Connor's work with some ash deposits, etc. The Bridge of the Gods landslide, this thing right here, happened sometime between 1425 and 1450 AD. Where'd that date come from? Tree ring analysis and an ash deposit. Oh, it's right here. This is one of those lectures I don't give very often. I had to watch my lecture on YouTube and take notes this morning. Kind of embarrassed to admit that. You remember this 
breaching of the landslide dam and having these sorted piles downstream of Cascade Locks, O'Connor found a ash, a volcanic ash layer from Mount St. Helens dated at 1480 AD. And our deposits are below that. What? Uh, you're watching live. Must be underneath. Must be underneath. There's a 14, sorry, there's a 1480 AD St. Helens ash that, that O'Connor found. And I'm caught in a problem right now. I, I guess I didn't take good enough notes of this lecture that I saw. The ash has to be underneath this. Can't be on top of it. 1480 ash right beneath this breaching of the landslide dam, indicating that this landslide had to be younger than that. Okay, that was awkward. Okay, I got a couple. I'm building towards this last part of our session. And uh, give me five more minutes. Wink, wink. If we're down to that timing, and we are, helicopter now, thank God. That's our most accurate date in 2020 for the Bridge of the Gods landslide, before, before 1500 AD, after 1400 AD. For a while, after Brian Atwater made the discovery that we talked about yesterday, what was that date for the most recent great earthquake in the Pacific Northwest? Do you have it in your mind? The one that was January 26th at nine o'clock at night? What was that year? 1700 AD. Oh, from, can you hear that helicopter? Hey, we're on lockdown. Unless you're related to the hospital, I don't want you up there. Probably is related to the hospital. Right? Um, 1700 AD, for a while, we thought, well, maybe this Bridge of the Gods